If most of you are here, then I can, can start the class so that if we start class early, then we can finish class early, then we can go back. Okay, that is my time. Okay, because I have meeting going on here at the same time to do the lecture. Alright, okay, so uh, chapter 5 is about the requirement engineering process. Okay, what we are going to cover in this topic. So we are going to look on the... Uh, what are the, what is the definition of requirement engineering and what are the five activities involved in the requirement engineering process and then the, what is the problems okay in the requirement analysis phases of so engineering and then how we can use and uh, evaluate the viewpoint oriented analysis okay so when we talk about the requirement engineering, okay, so the requirement engineering mainly, uh, mainly it focus on the process, okay, process of the clear understanding on what the system that you are going to work or you are developing, okay, a clear understanding. Of course, in the previous uh, lectures, uh, we have uh, we have discussed about the uh, requirement gathering techniques. Okay, even in assignment also, you have um, you have uh, come up with a variant type of um, requirement gathering techniques. Okay, so in here, so all those techniques. Okay, so all those techniques is what we can call it as a process. Okay, process which okay involve the clear understanding on the system that you're going to develop or the system that you're going to work okay so that is called as a requirement engineering okay so what is the expectation of the stakeholders on the system because you are developing the system for the user right okay so uh, in order for you to ensure that the system is uh, meet the requirement so this is the process that involved okay so when we talk about the process okay so there are certain process as we can see in here there are five process so which is the visibility studies requirement elicitations and analysis requirement spec requirement spec i have already we already discussed in chapter 4 so what we discuss in chapter 4 under the requirement spec can anyone remember can you remember me? MJ or Ken? So what we discussed in last, not last week, the previous week. Still can recall that because that is one of your uh, chapter will come out for your midterm. Huh? So what we discussed in chapter 4? Last class? Project manager. Yes. Okay, functional requirement and non-functional requirement. So that is the base, uh, that is the main thing that we have covered in the uh, chapter 4. Okay, so basically requirements, we have the uh, we have the system requirement, right? We have a system requirement and also we have the user requirement. Okay, and we do have the non-functional requirement and functional requirement. Okay, so what are the categories in non-functional requirement? Only this boy is answering my question. The rest? Humble. Very humble. <laughs> <laughs> you no need to show your low profile or humble here. Okay, in your study. Okay, so under the non functional requirement, as I mentioned, we have three category. Remember the word category. Okay, the three category which is the product, external and organization so these are the three categories under the non functional requirement okay functional requirement is where the what the system can do okay the user requirement and also the system requirements all goes under the functional requirement non functional requirement is these are the three categories always remember this okay so this is what we have discussed under one of the process okay one of the process called uh, requirement spec okay 
Next is the requirement validation. Requirement validation is about the testing. Okay. And then we do have the requirement management. Okay. So basically these are the five process involved in the software or survey one. It's a requirement engineering. Five process involved in the requirement engineering. Please take note. Okay. So let's look at the first process which is the visibility studies. When we talk about the visibility studies, this is the overview. On visibility studies, we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, five visibility studies, which is a technical visibility, economic visibility, legal visibility, operational visibility, and scheduling visibility. Please do remember this also. Okay, so basically, what is visibility? What is the definition of visibility? What is the definition of visibility? Visibility, we can we can uh, uh, we can uh, consider we can talk about the solution. To what extent? Okay, for example, let's say we have uh, we face this problem, the particular problem. So until minimum, what until the max maximum level of solution okay from from which extent that you from what extent that you can go to solve that problem okay so for example in here we have a five visibility sum okay uh, which is a five solution lah uh, and we can say five solutions okay so let's look uh, let's look at the technical visibilities okay so technical visibility, as you can see, you have that question in your mind, which is the project is technically possible. Technically possible is here where we can uh, talk about the resources. Okay, the resources that we could be going to use it. For example, the hardware, the software that we're going to use it, the technology that we're going to use it. Okay, nowadays you can see we have IoT, we have artificial intelligence. Okay, we have a lot of te new technology has been introduced. Now we have cyber security, we have blocked, uh, uh, we have blockchain, uh, okay, so much of technology has been introduced, okay. So in here, when you want to develop this project, okay, when you want to develop this system, so you have to consider whether, let's say, uh, this project, is it possible for me to complete, is it possible for me to complete on it, because we have all this kind of technology, can we use all these technologies? or which software that we can use it or which hardware that we can use it okay the technical parts okay the technical part it's not about the costing costing is different okay costing is economic costing is a economic this one is a technical okay the next one is the Economical. So, economical here is uh, you can determine whether the software uh, is capable, okay, to gain the financial uh, gains or organization or not. For example, let's say you estimated a certain hardware or software which uh, the company doesn't have. For example, the company uh, asks you to develop an IoT uh, related system, but the company itself doesn't have any IoT service in the company. They're going to develop only. Okay, but now you are going to develop the system for the IoT related system for the company. But later when you want to implement or you want to deploy the system into their company, okay, of course the company must have the proper hardware software, right? Okay, so you need to think, for example, let's say you propose, okay, the company, okay, you are proposing that, okay, uh, it seems that you are going to develop, okay, based on their requirements, uh, the company say, okay, I want to do this, this, this. Okay, then you have say, okay, based on your requirements, what I can see here is, um, I think we should provide, uh, we should come up with the IoT. Okay, IoT. But the company say IoT, actually we don't have the facilities in our company. Okay, never mind. So we just develop first. Okay, we develop first. Wait, later when we do the implementations or deployment, then you can install the necessary software or hardware in your company. Okay, so in here the econo economic feasibilities come into the place. Okay, which does it make the financial sense? 
okay whether the company can uh, can manage to buy or manage the uh, effort to buy all those uh, hardware the software that you going to develop or you going to use it okay so that is another thing okay so another uh, solution okay next is a legal visibility okay when we talk about the legal visibility here if you can see the limitations okay the limitations uh, affect the project okay uh, for example um, the data protection act act for uh, let's say if you are developing any uh, customer related a uh, customer service um, systems or something so make sure that when you gather uh, when you gather the customer data okay the customer data from any sources make sure that uh, data is protected okay the protected data okay uh, like uh, you have a social media laws okay we have a project certificates okay license the copyright ah the copyright okay you can simply use people's names or people's uh, traits or in your companies or in your systems okay like what you guys are doing in your assignment okay uh, our thai umt is not using uh, model but some of you saying that thai umt thai umt using model and then you want to conduct the interview or the observation okay so which is under the legal okay because our thai umt we are not practice using model platform okay we are using google classroom Okay, in this case, how come in your report you can mention that UMT is using a uh, model LMS, which is a copyright issues. It's a legal issues, isn't it? So that is a legal visibility. Okay. Next is the operation visibilities. Okay, operation visibilities here is uh, okay. Example, let's say you're going to develop a warehouse, ah, uh, warehouse like um, like Lazada, eBay, so we have a uh, so much like how how uh, like how many of you like to buy uh, overseas products? Not the local brands, overseas brands. Depends on what lah. What kind of product? Sometimes they have overseas product, right? Okay, we have the estimation, isn't it? We have the estimation. Okay, you'll be delivered this product within this day, this day. But okay, let's say the overseas product, the time zone, the time zone because we are Asian. Okay, Asian, we have a different time zone compared to Europe, right? Okay, you can check. Now our time is three forty-eight, but in London, it's a different time zone, isn't it? Okay, let's say we are going to buy any product from Europe countries. Okay, so of course there will be some uh, some uh, zone differences, right? The time zone differences. Okay, so that is called so operation visibility. Especially let's say if you want to set a warehouse, ah, uh, warehouse in Europe country. You have a warehouse in Asia, and you also have a warehouse in Europe. You have two warehouse. You know what is warehouse, right? No, I don't know warehouse. You know what is warehouse? Yes. What is that? Warehouse. Uh. Warehouse means warehouse. <laughs> the storage area. Hmm? The storage area. Yes, the storage area. All your storage will be in uh, in a so like uh, like in Malay what we call gudang. Yes. Okay. So okay. So if you have a two different in two different countries, you have a two different warehouse, and then in order for you to deliver the product, okay, to the customer will be different also according to the time zone, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that is the operation visibility. Okay, how hard is it to maintain and manage this projects, especially this kind of system that you're going to develop? Okay, next scheduling. Can we keep up the realistic deadline? Of course, ah, huh? of course. Um, uh, in a proposal, we are telling, okay, uh, I would like to. We plan to finish up this project within three months, or within two point five months. Why you have the two point five months over there? 
the 2.5 months can be extended to 3 months. Okay, due to certain unknown or, you know, some, uh, what we call, unexpected things happen, right? Okay, so just now, like, uh, for example, uh, during our COVID, uh, during our MCO, most of the companies close, okay, then we are work from home, and a lot of project has been delayed. Okay, because it's not that what we think. It's, it's just accidentally happened, right? Something unexpected happened. So everything has been collapsed. Okay, so this is a scheduling visibility. Okay, so basically when we talk visibility, so these are the five types of visibility, okay, which we have to think in order to make the project success. Okay. So I have already explained all the visibilities. You can go through this. Okay, you can go through all these visibilities. Okay. The next process is a requirement elicitation. So uh, analysis and elicitations. Okay, so elicitations is where you process, okay, to get something or to produce something. Okay. Especially uh, any information. Okay. So you can see. So in here, what are the information that you need? The system requirement. So how you can get the requirements is from the stakeholders. Okay. Okay. So uh, the difficult process, uh, the difficult process uh, under this uh, requirement analysis and elicitation is when, where the stakeholders not clear what they want. Okay and they have their own term to explain. This is what we have already studied in a previous topic, right? We have a problem in a natural language, okay, all that, okay? And then we have the sums of a process model, right, which we can use it for this kind of cases, okay? Okay, and then different stakeholders express the requirements a different way. Especially if you have a many stakeholders, many requirements, many person, okay, for that particular system, Okay, if you want to get the opinion or requirement from different people, uh, that is some more headache. Okay, one person say A, one another person say B, another person say C. So, which one did you want to implement? In their own perspective, right? In their perspective, for example, uh, when we use the SAR UMT intranet, uh, I'm as a lecturer, I have my own requirement. I want the, my... Uh, I want this, this to be have, okay? You as a student, you have your own requirement. There's been different people, we have a different perspective. Okay, different people, we have a different perspective, okay, towards of the system that we're going to develop or looking for. Okay, the other factors here is a politi uh, political factors, okay? And then uh, we also have some issues in the economic and also the business environment, like what I see just now. Okay, the MCO, all those things. Okay. The next one here is, okay, so these are the explanations, huh, the, the problems, okay, the difficult process, okay, the requirement, as I told you, requirement analysis and elicitation is a very difficult process. Okay, one of the difficult process due to these other reasons, okay, because of the not clear uh, with the stakeholders, okay, the requirements, okay, difficult to express all that, okay. Okay, the next one is uh, requirement discovery, okay. So, that this uh, requirement discovery is under the requirement analysis and elicitation, huh? okay, this is sub uh, what we call uh, subtask. Okay, so this is a process where you will interact with the stakeholders. Okay, to discover the requirements. So how you can discover the requirements? Okay, this is what you have done in your assignment based on the documentation. I see you have the previous systems. You have a previous manual things. Then you can go through the uh, the requirements facts. Okay, documentation or uh, through the stakeholders itself or you will have the specification of the similar system or, or other ways okay like for example you have conduct the interview observations uh, uh, survey okay questionnaire okay so these are a lot of methods okay okay and 
the viewpoint oriented analysis is one of the and okay uh, for you okay for us we know okay, we can have the interview questionnaire all that but a part of that a part of that so we have one more method okay what we call as a viewpoint oriented analysis this is another method this is another method how you can gather the requirement all the while we know that we can gather the requirement using the survey questionnaire or that but a part of that if you want to go more deeper okay more analysis of this we can use the viewpoint oriented analysis okay this is what i'm telling the people's perspective okay i as a lecturer i have my own expectation you as a student you have your own expectations okay and another person we have your own expectation so we will do a thorough analysis based on your perspective so that is what we call the viewpoint your view in your point of view okay in your point of view that's what they call as a viewpoint okay so basically we have a um, uh, interactive viewpoint indirect viewpoint and then domain viewpoint we have three viewpoint uh, interactive viewpoint indirect viewpoint and domain viewpoint okay so what is interactive okay okay interactive viewpoint is where the people we use the system we use the system they are not looking at the system they use the system okay they are one of the user of the system okay for example atm machine you can see the atm machine right when you go to atm machine we as a user right so we insert the card then we tap we put the pin numbers and we do the whatever things so we are using the atm machine right so we are the interactor okay we are using we are using the system okay we are getting something from the system okay next indirect indirect here is people or the stakeholders who not using the system but but they will get something from there for example okay for example let's say uh, the okay we take the same banking system up uh, the banking system okay the banker okay the banker okay they won't come to the atm machine and check our our uh, take our uh, what we call um, uh, card and then they not going to see anything there okay by by in their system in their computer okay they are not using the atm machine but in their computer at office by entering your account detail or uh, account number they can view the transaction right okay whatever things that they have done all this but in here the bank manager is not using the atm machine but but they are getting something from the atm machine which they can get the details of your transaction right, based on your account number okay so that is what we call as the indirect viewpoint indirect viewpoint okay next is the domain domain is a constraint okay because i have already explained about this uh, constraint so what are the constraint the obstacles okay so which you can uh, you face it okay in order to develop the system okay so in here you can see okay For example, you can see, uh, as I told you, the ATM system, uh, which you can see the interactor of the viewpoint is the bank customers, okay, the bank staff and the bank database. The indirect is the bank manager, bank security staff, bank marketing staff. They are not doing. They are not using the system. They are not using the system, but they are using the system for the different purposes. okay next domain viewpoint is a standard for example you can talk about the user interface you can talk about the uh, the standards okay all that is called uh, falls under the domain viewpoints 
ओके ओके हियर यू कैन सी एम ओके अनदर एग्जांपल कॉलेज लाइब्रेरी सिस्टम ओके कॉलेज लाइब्रेरी सिस्टम सो इन हियर हु इज द इंटरेक्टर हु इज यूजिंग दिस सिस्टम डायरेक्टली द स्टूडेंट द लेक्चरर्स द ट्यूटर the system engineer the librarian okay the indirect view point here is okay the library manager okay the finance department why the finance department because as you can see because uh, in library we are buying uh, we are buying the new books right okay so the finance department they want to release the purchase order okay purchase order okay they they release the purchase order only okay you can buy a new book for the library okay in order for them to release the purchase order okay so they want to look at the list of books okay list of books in the system but they are not using the system they are not using them they are not borrowing any books there they are not doing anything they that then okay they just get the list of books so that they can release the purchase order okay that is for the finance department suppliers also same suppliers they won't use the system they just use the system as a reference only oh okay let me i need to supply this book to you and supply this but they are not using the system you understand okay the one who benefit of experience with the system is for as an interactor okay the domain as i told you is the constraint which you will have the problems of the obstacles in the user interface standards okay the classification standards okay so domain viewpoint is only to which is the user interface standards or the classification standard or even the interoperability the interoperability okay can be considered in here okay any questions so you can see in here so this is how you have to come out with the viewpoint uh, hierarchy this is called viewpoint hierarchy and this is what you have to do in your assignment okay so when we talk about the viewpoint only three okay only three viewpoint which we have a indirect interactor and domain there's no more there's nothing else only three okay but under each okay under each viewpoint is up to you okay how many viewpoint analysis that you going to put okay it's not it's not fixed okay it's not fixed okay it depends on what type of system that you're working on okay so as you can see here compared to the indirect interactor for the college library system we have many okay we have many users students lecturers tutors system leaders okay we have a catalog of staffs okay library staffs okay on that okay so this is another example huh? okay identify five view point five view points here this is five view point which is online client is one view point reservation staff another view point marketing staff another view point or uh, hotel manager another view point and user interface another view point okay we have five view points one two three four five okay so in the question if you ask identify five view points so this is the answer understand understand view point from different people we have five different people not five, uh, four people but the other one is uh, not people okay the domain is not a people okay it is a constraint but others all is a people or a subsystems can see okay okay so this is a questions that you can go through okay 
This one is the techniques, um, okay, under the requirement analysis, sir. Okay, we are still in the requirement analysis and elicitations. Okay, the techniques here, I believe that you know all these techniques because we already used these techniques in your assignment, which is the interview, prototype, uh, scenario, uh, observations. Okay? Okay, observation here, as we know, one thing is like uh, you can you can sit and you can watch people are what people are doing. And another one is you yourself can become the user, then you can observe the system. And another type of observation called as um, uh, ethnography. You know what is ethnography? You know what is ethnography? Anyone? Anyone know ethnography mean what? Ethnography is it can capture the emoji, the behavior, the behavior of you. For example, let's say if I ask about, okay, uh, how's the class today? Okay, then you say, hmm, like uh, you have the, face, the facial reaction, right? The facial reaction. You're not saying anything, okay? You're not saying anything in a wording. Okay, you say, I'm happy. No, you're not saying anything in a wording. Okay, you are showing that through your facial expression. Okay, that is called as the ethnography observation. Understand? Okay? Okay. This is under still a requirement analysis and elicitations. Okay. So. the requirement documentations so what are the things that you need in order for you to document the requirements okay the next one is a requirements pack okay requirements pack i don't want to discuss because i already discussed in a chapter four which is the function requirement and function requirement so i skip this okay the fourth process is the requirement validations okay so when we talk about the requirement validation which I which I mentioned just now is about the testing. Okay, it's about the testing. Okay, for example, you can see this question. Are we building the right system? Okay, are we building the right system? Okay. So this is the verification sum. Okay, we have a verifications and we have the validations. Okay. So what is the difference between verifications and validation? Verify and validate. Verify the user, validate the user, or verify the system, validate the system, anything also can. So what is the difference between verify and validate? Any example or any simple example? When you want to develop any system, right? So these two things are very important, which is the verifications and validations. So what is the process involved in the verification? Verification here is you will ensure that the software, okay, the software that you're going to develop is correct, correctly implemented based on the spec. Okay, when we talk about the spec, we have the non-functional requirement, non-functional requirement for that, right? So, we have to make sure whether the system is meet all the spec, the functions or not. Okay, so that is a verifications. Okay, what is validations? Ah, 
validations is this question. Are we building the right system? So why, why you have this question in your mind when you want to come for the validation? Are we building the right system? Mean, that means you have the question that uh, are we really meet the user requirement? That is the answer, right? Yes or no? If you have this question, now we building the right system mean? So what will be your answer? Yes, I'm building the right system based on the user requirement. That is your answer. So in here the validation is based on the user requirements. Okay, so that you can avoid the rework. You can avoid the rework. Okay? So that is the reason, you know, that is the that is the thing that why okay where the software process model okay we have to use the proper methodology so we have to use a proper uh, requirement engineering all these stuff is happen okay they have introduced okay because we want to avoid all these uh, the rework things the retesting okay the errors okay so these are the things that we're going to cover that we, that we are studying now okay so how we can avoid, okay? So you can see here, okay, the validity and the consistency. Okay, example. Okay, so in here, under the requirements validations, okay, we have um, the important things is validity, consistency, completeness, realism check. Okay, so what is the difference between this? Terms. The difference between these terms. Anyone? Okay, let's talk about the validity first. Okay, just now I already talked about the validity. Okay, which is you have to make sure that the functions, uh, the functions the user wanted, okay, is correct and has been confirmed. Okay, whatever functions. Okay, that is validity. Okay, consistency. Consistency. No conflict functions. Okay, consistency here is no conflict function. For example, you have already have in that system, you already have that particular function. Okay, like uh, I think we have discussed this in the previous chapter. Uh, what we call as, um, uh, what we call, uh, um, there's one word that, uh, hold on now. Uh. Yes, amalgamation. Uh, suddenly, okay, amalgamation. You know what is amalgamation? What is amalgamation? Because my mind was uh, was thinking about the ambiguity, ambiguity, it's not ambiguity. Amalgamation. What is amalgamation? Okay, one thing, but it's re it's redundant. Two, okay, actually it's one only, but you are repeating twice. Okay, it's uh, like one function. Okay. But you have that one function, you have a two, uh, uh, what we call, um, two different name. Two different name, but both also will do one function. Understand? Both also same, both are same. Okay, both are same. But your uh, like uh, you just purposely put two different names there. But both are doing the same function. Both are doing the same function. That is called amalgamation. Okay, so that is called as a consistency. Okay, the consistency. Okay, next is completeness. Completeness. Completeness means? Okay, all these are the validity, the consistency, the completeness, the realism check. The verifiability are all the aspect in the 
uh, what we call in the requirement okay which must be checked okay before you release the system to your customer so these are the aspect you have to check okay because most of the errors most of the errors is occur from this aspect okay because if you see just now we have a two uh, different words but both are doing the same work okay why you have this because you never do a proper testing you never do a proper testing okay okay and then people are complaining i asked you to add this function but i didn't see this function in the system so why this thing happen why this thing happen because you never do a proper validity okay see all the complaints all the complaints from the systems or all the errors that you found from the systems is derived okay is derived from all this aspect so these are the aspects so let's say if you never focus on this particular aspect or you are not uh, you are lack of you know they didn't give importance the problems will occur the problems will occur okay next is completeness completeness here is make sure all the function eh? because whatever function the the customer asks you to add make sure everything is good it's not that they ask you to add the function you add but it doesn't work it must work it must work okay that is completeness okay next is realism check realism check okay i asked you to develop the system okay i want you i want you to develop the ai the uh, artificial intelligent things okay the technology in the system okay done ready okay done ready but i want to check whether it really works or not that is called as a realism check really okay in a realistic it works or not in a real time it works or not okay so that is a realism check okay it's not that i asked you to do then you do but you didn't put a you didn't use the proper testing or you didn't deploy that you didn't do the main okay nothing okay so that also cause problems okay next is verifiability verifiability ah this is what we call the prototype okay prototype for example you done one part then you show to your user or customer okay are you okay can i proceed to the next okay so that is how you using it so when you see here uh, when is when i uh, like what i mentioned just now for each aspect which i discuss there are some process which we have studied previously is involved in that yes or no for example we have we have to use the software pro a proper software process model we have to use a proper data gathering techniques okay so you can see whatever that we have studied everything we have to implement okay so remember all this aspect huh? we have 1 2 3 4 five aspect okay five aspect okay with the requirement must be checked okay all the requirement must be checked based on this five aspect okay so this one is the summary okay it's an example okay the next one is the requirement management okay the last process okay the last process the requirement engineering is a requirement process okay under the requirement process we have two one is a management planning and the other one is a change management okay so for the management planning is more to the management side okay which they have their own policies and procedures okay uh, which everybody have to follow okay based on the requirements okay must be designed and specified and change management is where the proposed requirements right okay where the proposed requirement changes are analyzed okay and their impact are assessed Okay, like what I say just now. Okay, um, in your in your current system, you don't have any technologies. Okay, 
but in your system B, you're going to implement IoT or any new technologies. Okay, so you have to do a thorough study. Okay, thorough study. In case, if why implement the AI in manufacturing system, what will be happen? That means, if I implement AI, that means I'm going to bring a robot. So no more, um, no more women. Okay, no more manpower. Okay, I only want to depend on uh, machine hundred percent because human always take MC. Okay, always fall in sick, take annual leave, but machine don't want leave. Okay, they can work twenty four by seven. So I want to implement or I want to introduce a machine in the production. Okay, but you need to do a thorough study, a thorough analysis. Is it possible? And how is it possible? It's a change management. It's a change management. Okay, change management, not the manage the management change. Huh? Okay, this is they are changing their policies. Okay, based on the current trend, based on their current trend. Okay, because they are maybe nineties. 80s companies, but now we are in 2023. Really, if you still want to, if you still want to follow the punch card, too late because now no more punch card, right? Now we have lot of ways to scan the attendance, isn't it? Some they use the biometric, some they use the system. So if you still want to stick the punch card, uh, if you are outdated lah, so you have to change your management. That is called change management. Understand? Understand? Okay. Okay, that's all. Okay, so five process. Huh? Okay. So remember all the five process under the requirement engineering: visibility study, requirement elicitations and analysis, requirement spec, requirement validation, and uh, requirement management. Okay. Any questions? Any questions, class? Okay, so for your midterm month next week, 